Yay Networks. We've forgotten something. What did we forget? Normally we fold the screen of my uh, wheelchair down because having it in my peripheral vision, uh-huh. as she lovers the screen now, yeah. having it in my peripheral vision disorients me. Okay. Now that it is lowered, <laughs> I feel right with the world. The screen that you're supposed to use for things. And I can begin wow. the mayhem. Okay. What do we have in store today? All right. Well, first, we're going to tell you about the week that we had. We had another round of visitors. Yeah, we're really packing our yeah. schedule with lots of visitors. It was like our sixth drive to and from the airport. I am never driving to the LAX airport. Mm-hmm. La- Los Angeles. What does LAX stand for? I don't know. Los Angeles. I was in a Los Angeles. Exportation. Transport X. X is, I think I've it's never, just like, like ours is MSP. Minneapolis, Minneapolis St. Paul. Paul. Yeah. Los Angeles Xylophone. Okay. Uh, I'm never going to LAX again. I've been there enough in the past two weeks mm-hmm. for a lifetime. But my mom is going to fly into LAX in like a month. So. Liz, I'm sorry. You will have to find your own way <laughs> from the airport to our house. Actually, she will be renting a car to help us drive home eventually. So maybe she'll just drive herself home. Yeah. So we're going to recap that. Then then we have some mayhem. I guess they're more junkyard stories. You know, I think they're more junkyard than mayhem. We're going to be sharing with you every time, every Uh, single time that Hannah and I have thrown up Shane in a public setting. But we're not, I know that people don't want to hear like the details of that. It's not really about the throw up. It's about the places that we were, the actions that we took afterwards. The so, situations. Yeah. We're not going to go into detail on like the actual act of it. So like if that disgusts you, we will keep that to a minimum. It's really just, you know, the whole, the whole context of these events. You mean all of that practice that I've been doing to reenact <laughs> My throw ups for all of them. Have you been doing throwing up sounds? None of those in the podcast. No. Shane, no. I can see your lips puckering with anticipation. No. Don't tell them about my puckering lips. Shane, literally, I could just see him forming an O with his lips to begin the sound. Do not do sounds. That is disgusting. And then we are going to tell you about our worst hotel stay ever. Yeah, like a a new kind of theme that we're working with here on Jet Air Mayhem mm-hmm. is thinking back to our life together mm-hmm. and our lives before we knew each other. Yeah. And just picking out moments that... The junkiest stories. We're absolute Jet Air Mayhem. Yeah. And there are a lot of them. There are. As we've put our heads together. Yep. But this hotel experience was mayhem to the max. And we've had some bad hotel experiences, so this one really, this is a good one. Remember when the roof collapsed? Remember when we heard the rats running through the ceiling? <laughs> and we caught both of those on video. <laughs> That's kind of lucky. <laughs> and those don't even yeah. come close Mm-mm. to the experience that we're going to tell you about. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get to the mayhem, let's talk about some family mayhem. Aww. And your brother yes. and nieces, yep. two of them, came out to visit us yes. here in LAX, which is what I'm calling Los Angeles oh, from now on. Please don't do that. Shane. It was a fun time. Everyone's going to get confused about that. Yes. Yeah, so my brother and two of my nieces came out. We had a great weekend. It was a shorter trip. They were just here for a few days for a long weekend. And unfortunately for them, you know, coming from Minnesota, they were excited about California weather. It poured the entire visit. And it was also like 45 degrees. I don't really complain about LA, LAX oh, too much. But the weather, since we've been here <laughs> in <us>. January, <laughs> has been pretty abysmal. We came here to escape the Minnesota winter. We are so sorry to everyone in the area who is being affected by our presence. It has been wintry here. We brought the bad weather with us. Yeah, we really did. And then they got to experience it. So they were here for the weekend. Uh, Friday they arrived. It was pouring. We drove to the airport for the 98th their fl- time. Yeah, and their flight was actually delayed uh, first from the previous day in Minnesota, there was a snowstorm. And then the day that they actually flew, there was a storm out here. So they had to fly like an hour and a half around it. So it was a much longer flight than it was supposed to be. It was very mayhemy. They finally arrived. Uh, we just stayed in that night because it was horrible weather. Well, I think we had an alert on our phones. that was like, this is a life-threatening situation. Do not go out. Yeah. And I don't blame that alert yeah. because 
the drive to get them at the airport yeah. was like driving through an apocalypse. It really was. Every light, every traffic light, yeah. it was out in its There way. was no power. There was no power in LA. And no one knew what to do. No one was doing the like every other car thing. One side would just begin to go and then the other side would eventually start like honking and making them stop. It was bizarre. There were people like trudging through waist high puddles <laughs> everywhere. I it don't was know. not waist high, but it was it was very deep. Nipple high puddles <laughs> all throughout the city. Uh, it was chaos. It was pure chaos. It really was. So we finally got them home. We stayed in. The next day, it wasn't raining as much. It was like on and off rain. It a wasn't drizzle. It was a drizzle. It was just kind of gross out. It was cold. Um, but we wanted to do something because we were like, this is, you know, you're in LA. You have one day in LA. You have, this two is days your, in LA. Yeah, your only full day. Let's do something. So we decided to drive out to like the Malibu area to see the ocean. In retrospect, the plan that we picked yeah. for this rainy day wasn't a very good rainy day plan. Well, no, we were like, we're going to be in the car. Like we were going to, we were like, let's go do a view from the car. But the drive there is through a perilous Mountain pass. Well, no, we just took the wrong mountain pass. <sighs> we thought we were taking the mountain pass that we always take, and we realized we took a different one that was, it was through Topanga. The Topanga Canyon? Yeah. Uh, it was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. There was mud all over the road. Literally like mudslides. <laughs> at, at one point, we were stopped by like People city cleaning up. trucks. Yeah. And we were like, you shall not pass. <laughs> uh, the road's out ahead. Give us a minute. Um, yeah. And that was when we were like, oh, are we like in danger yeah. here? But um, by then it was too far to go back. <laughs> we were going through. It was it was bad. So we like, <laughs> we've already wasted 20 minutes uh -huh. of our life. We're going to risk it. Working <laughs> this canyon through. So anyway, we finally get out to the ocean. They see the view. It was, you know, it was nice once we were there. It was raining. It was raining. <laughs> uh, and we start to realize that the power is also out in in uh, Pacific Palisades where we ended up. L.A. cannot handle rain. <laughs> and we, we pull up to the restaurant that we had planned to go to. We had checked their website and their like Facebook and Instagram pages before. And they had posted that morning, come join us this weekend. So we were like, oh, perfect. They're open. We arrive. They're closed. Closed. And I think that must have been like an automated post that they scheduled before the storm because like who does that? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's like actively pouring. Yeah. Like the rain was picking up Making while we were back. out there. And we're like starving. We're still starving. Hungry. And we're trying to figure out where to go. Yeah. Thankfully, we found a restaurant. We drove like 30 more minutes, finally found a restaurant. Down in Marina del Rey. Yeah. That was delicious. It was it, good. Yeah. Fun. Had a nice meal. But. That kind of summed up the weekend. That was the whole day. Yeah. The next day we actually did the Warner Brothers studio tour. It was not raining on Sunday. Yeah. And that was a really, really great experience. So they de definitely got like their LA. Their little LA experience. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. But we ate lots of good food. Yep. Played we board games. Played board games, watched movies. So all in all, successful family visit. Yeah. And uh, we don't have any more guests until your mom, right? Yeah. That's your it. Mom's coming back in like a month. Yep. Um, She's going to be here for a week. She's going to watch Chloe for us while we go on a super special trip. Well, I'm doing my eyebrows up and down. Yeah. <laughs> and then we are all going to drive home together to Minnesota. Ah, uh, back to the cold. Yeah. From cold to more to cold. cold. It's going to be even colder there. We're going to miss the LA 40 degrees. I'm going to attempt to steal away okay. here, and I want you guys to leave without me. Yeah, I know you don't want to go home. I want you to get halfway home and have the home alone. Mm -hmm. Kevin! Shane, I that was be like, probably so loud into the microphone. Sorry to our editor that's listening to this. <laughs> I want you to have that moment where you are uh -huh. halfway home and you Shane. go, Shane! Yeah. We forgot him. But I'll be laying on the beach <laughs> in sunny Santa Monica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should we move on now to our, uh, I don't even want to say the word, our stomach issue stories? Yes, yeah, so let's take a trip break, and then we'll be back with every experience we've ever had throwing <laughs> oh, up in public. <laughs> There's more than one. It's so bad. All right, we are back from break, and we're going to begin with Shane's story. Yes, and when I say the word handball, oh, God. what do you, Hannah, and you, audience at home, what do you think of? Well, if you've watched our videos for like four years, you might remember this story. The mega fans. Yeah, it's been a long time since this has come up. I wonder how much of it we even remember. 
I know it, we should have watched the video that we made about this, but I remember making it. Do you remember we were laying on the couch in our first apartment? I do. And we told the story. I used to lay on top of you more often. I know. We've gotten away from that theme we stopped in our doing videos. That. Can you put me on your lap? <laughs> but we told it laying down very casually. Uh, and I, I don't know how this telling is going to differ from it because we haven't watched it in four years. We're going to be sitting up. Uh, yeah, sleeping. we will be sitting. And we'll probably remember a few less details, but it doesn't matter. This is really, this is maybe one of our worst moments. It was on one of our road trips together, and it was very early in our relationship. Yeah. Um, and we were in the town of Mobile, Alabama. Yep. A hidden gem, Yeah. I will just say. Yeah. Hannah and I have been to Mobile, Alabama several times now. Yep. And we absolutely we love, it. love it there. Yeah. It has culture it has food yeah it has everything that you could want in a like travel destination true and i feel that when you say we're going to mobile alabama people are like huh yeah why mm -hmm. but it's amazing it's a great city yeah we were in mobile alabama and we went to breakfast <laughs> at a restaurant that i believe is called a spot of tea i was gonna name them Oh, should I not have? Oh, I they were so them. nice, though. It's a wonderful restaurant. We went like seven times. I just don't want them to find out who we are. No, but this is important because <laughs> on that day, they said, welcome back. Like, we had gone to this restaurant. They knew us. They knew us. And, like, this was pre-YouTube. They didn't know us. Like, I don't think they know, you know, mm -hmm. us through, like, the internet. They just knew us because we had gone to this, re this restaurant over and over again. Yeah, we found a nice diner that was within walking distance of our hotel. Yeah. And so we ate breakfast there every day. And they had so many different kinds of tea. It was really nice. So anyway. Mm, we wait. Cheesy grits. Yep. Oh. I'm having a moment. Okay. So we go to the restaurant and uh, we're having breakfast. On the way there, we were walking from our hotel. Shane was like, my stomach feels a little weird. Like, I kind of have a stomach ache. I'm a little nauseous. Yeah, it was like hot. It was very hot, middle of yeah. summer, like muggy, and that wasn't helping. Surprise. Yeah. I was just like, kind of feeling off. Yep. So we arrive, and I'm like not feeling that well, but I figured that ordering breakfast and Getting some food and coffee into me yeah. will help. Yeah, you thought having food would make it better. Yeah, it didn't. It did Spoiler not. Spoiler alert. So we're sitting in the restaurant. They seated us kind of in the middle, just in the middle of the room. We're so that's where we by are. People. Yeah, that's where we are. And we order. I don't remember what I ordered, but I sure do remember what Shane ordered. What do you think a, a boy with a sore tummy would order? Hmm? <laughs> Maybe some tea. What would a sick guy order? Some. White toast. Yeah, I was going to say like toast, plain Butter toast. Butter toast. Mm -hmm. What uh -huh. did you order, Shane? Poached eggs, <laughs> cheesy grits, uh, hash browns. I think it was like eggs, but I don't know. I remember that there was a poached egg. It was the whole spread. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was hollandaise. So, you know. So you got eggs, Benedict. A real casual breakfast. The food arrives, and Shane takes one bite of egg. I dive right in. Mm -hmm. And says to me, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> the thing <laughs> that every woman <laughs> is just dying to hear yep. on a lovely little quaint breakfast date. Yep. Uh, and so I was like, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> should we go to the bathroom? I think you said, no, you're not. Yeah, you're I was like, like no. no. Please, like, oh, well, probably, please don't. Please don't. Uh, so I'm like, okay, so I, I get Shane's joystick down and I'm like, we need to go into the bathroom right now. Like it's either outside, but then there's nothing like, I don't even know why I thought the bathroom. It's not like you could reach the toilet in the bathroom and like puke into it. We you, just, know? you were like, we, we need to be we need out to of, not be out of, yeah. I, we need to not be within eyesight. Exactly. Like we need people. privacy right now. And I had nothing at the table that would help with the situation. So uh, we, sorry, really too heavy out. You, I had never thrown up with you before this moment. No. So that is another layer of, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't know what was happening. Yeah. Right? Like you realize, what? Throw up? What do you mean? I guess. <sighs> I mean, I knew the concept of throw up, but <laughs> what I, is it throw up? Well, I didn't know it was happening. <laughs> What's throw up? <laughs> You're going to what? <laughs> no, but like you didn't. You didn't have experience with handling yeah, how are. I throw up. And for all I know, this is a life-threatening situation now. I didn't know if you could throw up. I was like, what do you What do you mean you're going to throw up? 
So we, you know, move away from the table. We're heading toward the bathroom. Pretty frantic. As fast as we can possibly go, weaving through tables. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> Shane did not make it to the bathroom. Uh, he just th- <laughs> began to throw up on his lap. I remember this like <laughs> horrible memory burned into my brain of Hannah turning around on her way to the bathroom, mm-hmm. looking back at me. Yeah. And I'm, you know, again, surrounded by tables. And I'm just <laughs> throwing up on myself. Oh, no. <laughs> while still moving. <laughs> still, like, very, <laughs> very determined. But, like, I can't lift my own arms up to my mouth to, like, cover. So I'm just trying to keep my mouth closed. <laughs> but it's not working. You didn't. You didn't. We had to throw away the pants. Uh, Spoiler <laughs> alert. So Shane is throwing up. We are running to the bathroom. We finally get to the women's bathroom. And I think there were like three or four stalls in it. It was a fairly big bathroom. Why didn't we go in the men's? I'm just curious. Well, I, I just remember. didn't like run into. The, I think I was leading the way and I just didn't run into the men's room. And I was I was busy. It didn't so matter. I just followed you. <laughs> it didn't matter which bathroom we went into. I don't think there was anybody in the bathroom. I, I mean, they I might have been. Their, uh, well, I yeah, was, you know. they might have been in a stall, and they might have stayed there once they heard us come in with all the commotion, and we never saw them. But we didn't see anybody in the bathroom, so we go in. Shane cannot reach the toilet; his wheelchair does not fit into the stall. There might have been an accessible stall in the back, but we did not get there. And it wouldn't have helped either. Like, yeah, it would. You would have had to lift me out of my chair. Yeah. to reach the toilet. Or the sick. There was no time. There was no, even just pulling up, there was no time. So I instead tried to grab some toilet paper, you know, but I was like, this is pointless. So at a certain point, like, I think this was a wave two. I'm like, me, yeah. yeah me. You're like, I'm going to throw up again. And so I created a hand bowl. She creates a hand bowl. With my hands. And I just caught, this is so disgusting. All of it. Just want to say she caught it. Yep. I go more and more. Shame. She's like emptying out rounds into Shame. the toilet, coming back for more. It happened. There was no stopping it. Uh-huh. I it was a low. It was a low moment. So then once you were done, you did feel a bit better. Like I think you were fine after that. But you were done throwing up and I remember using like paper towels to try to clean up your pants. But it was a mess. Which didn't work. We did have to throw the pants away. Um but we had a we had a decision to make. What do you do when you mid meal run into the bathroom or halfway through the restaurant? Like and begin to fountaining on the way there. Uh huh. What, what's the next move? Everyone listening is thinking to themselves: you leave that bathroom and you go back to your hotel and you never show your face there again. <laughs> All right. Or you tell the server, "I'm so sorry," you know. My husband, my boyfriend, I guess at the time is not feeling well. Here's the payment for the meal, and we will be going now. We didn't sorry, do that. Sorry for the commotion. We didn't want to have that conversation. Nope. I so didn't. <laughs> I think we were a little out of it. Yes. We were thrown off by the whole experience. We were young and made a terrible choice. We sat back down <laughs> at the table. Yeah. Still surrounded by all the people. Uh huh. And we finished our <laughs> meal <laughs> as if. There's not throw up all over me, oh, and that I had no. just like done this in <laughs> front of them. We really did. we finished the entire meal. I think part of it was that you felt better and you were like, "I'm hungry." That had to have been part of it because who does that? Well, this is kind of our mo. The next story ends similarly. We don't know how to deal with uncomfortable situations, no. so we just pretend like, like nothing happened. Happen. <laughs> let's tell your story oh. now that we've dragged me through the vomit yes let's drag you through the vomit so this was around the same time this is actually earlier in our relationship i think this was only six months of dating it was like one of our first overnight trips together. yeah i think this was six months yeah. of dating shane's story is about a year of dating and we went on a one or two night, like weekend overnight trip to Peddler's Village. The most amazing place in the world. Yeah. You, you've probably, if you've listened to our videos or whatever, you've probably heard us mention Peddler's Village. We love it. It's a very quaint shopping. Old timey. Old timey area. So it's just very picturesque. It's, it's beautiful. It's like a little shopping, like district. I mean, the whole area of like Bucks County in Pennsylvania and then like the New Jersey side, all yeah. of that is one of my favorite places in the world to yeah. be. It's so perfect. Just cute little towns. Yeah. Great quiet. Yes. Lots of cool and shops and restaurants, whatever. Yeah. We went in very early September and the weather was so perfect. I remember it was like 
you know, 75, 80 during the day. And then you'd wake up in the morning and it was like 70 and crisp. Uh-huh. It was the, just those perfect days. So we're there for a couple days. days. Uh, the first night <laughs> we, this, this is really early on. This is six months in. We decided to get a bottle of sangria. A giant bottle of sangria. Shane wanted, there's like a specialty wine shop there. Shane wanted wine. I don't drink. Like I never did. You were more open to it back then though. But I was more open because I was like, oh, like this is what adults do. Like well, I'll yeah. just do it. And I think you were trying to figure out if you did enjoy. Yes. If drinking. I could get through the gross taste and like enjoy, like eventually yeah. learn to like wine. So I was like, well, sangria, like yeah. it's sweet, you know, maybe you'll, yeah. you'll like it. Let's get the biggest bottle they have. Well, yeah. The only bottle of sangria that they had was like a, what is it? What, a two liters? Like what is the gigantic bottle? I don't know. It wasn't a regular wine bottle. It was no, it was like a two and a half. Triple wine bottle. Yeah. yeah. It Lots was of wine. huge. So we get the sangria bottle. And this is so you, Shane. This is really you. At like back then, you were what twenty three. I was twenty. I was yeah. And Shane was like, "Let's play a drinking game in our hotel room." Yeah, yeah. You're like this is just this is exactly you. You wanted to play a drinking game, and you made it like uh, we had to answer questions about each other, and if you got it wrong, you had to drink. Yes. Now, first of all, it was more inappropriate than that, but we'll leave those details. Oh out. yeah, but it doesn't matter. the The drinking is the important part. <laughs> Now, first of all, this kind of exposed to me how little I remembered about like details that are not important. Like, for example, one of the first questions that Shane asked me was, what is my middle name? And I realized that I did not retain that information because who cares what his middle name is? And so I didn't know. I just everyone, was like, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> now I know it. But six months in, I was like, oh, I guess I don't know your middle name. Like, I'm sure you told me at some point, but that's. I don't think you had because your middle name is the same as my dad's middle name. And I feel like I would have been like, wow, that's interesting. These, these are excuses. And yeah. they don't they don't really. The point is here. I got they drank a lot. I couldn't remember Shane's birthday. OK, everybody. We had already celebrated his birthday. I got close, but I didn't remember the exact day. Yeah, it was a, that's it wasn't how it very went. fun for me to play. It was a realization that my girlfriend didn't care about me. No, you were happy. You were happy. One of the questions was, when did I get my spinal fusion? I remember that. And I remember thinking you were seven, but I was like, no, that's too young. So I guess 13, Ooh, but it was wrong. seven. Drink. Now I know everything about you. So I had to drink most of that bottle. I drank like almost two liters of sangria. Oh, this is a sweet, sweet, thick wine. Yep. By the end of the game, we are both very much feeling it yeah you had less i do, were you feeling it like i don't know if we ever talked about that i was but not in not in any kind of like yeah serious way because you got almost every answer correct yes because i love you uh <laughs> um, but i remember like when we went to bed you stopped ter- you picked me up to put me in bed mm-hmm. and halfway there you were like oh the room is spinning yeah and i was like get me in the bed hurry 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 that was my <laughs> first experience of like when you can't focus your eyes yeah when you're drunk like yeah. i i had never that had never happened to me before and i was like oh my god my eyes i cannot stop my eyes from moving it was so you know yeah wild to me so fun night wild fun night yeah we go to bed yep we- i wake up in the middle of the night we're not skipping this part i wake up in the middle of the night Six months in, I'm still trying to impress Shane, even though I don't remember anything about him. <laughs> I'm still trying yeah, to does, doesn't sound like it. impress him. I don't want to be a freak. I don't want to be a weirdo. So I'm like, oh, my God, I really need to throw up. Like, I really need to throw up. But this is embarrassing. I should be able to hold down my two liters of wine. I should be able to do this. I should be a tank. Yeah. So I remember waking up in the middle of the night to pee, which makes sense, and beginning to, like, gag like I was just gagging over and over again about to throw up but I was like swallowing it down and I remember you waking up and being like are you okay like what are those sounds you said we're not gonna deal with the details here I wasn't giving and sounds you, well you're explicitly describing okay. it sorry to all of our listeners sorry I'm just saying I was having issues it was noisy and you were like are you okay and I was like yep I'm fine <laughs> you're like nothing, nothing's wrong <laughs> nothing is wrong I'm totally fine <laughs> Anyway, I thought that if I held it down, I would digest everything, and in the morning, I would wake up fine. Right. Your liver's like, no, hon. That's not how it works. No, honey. Apparently. You need to get rid of that. Yeah. So I woke up. uh, I think you woke me up at like 8. I was wide awake at 8 a.m. Yep. Feeling fresh, feeling renewed, (laughs) had a great night's sleep. I had a I didn't really connect Hannah's overnight like noises to the fact that like maybe she wouldn't be feeling well, so I was like... 
hey, hon, rise and shine. <laughs> like, it's a beautiful day. Let's get out there and have some fun. Yes. Yeah, so I wake up and I'm like, I am... I am dying. I, I feel horrible. your response was, Ew. Yeah. I feel more nauseous than I've ever been. I have a horrible headache. I cannot do this. And Shane was like, oh, come on. Like, you've just never really been drunk before. You're totally fine. You'll feel better once we, you go outside, get some fresh air, get some tea. You'll feel better. I was, I was convinced. Like, okay. Yeah. I was convinced that you were over overreacting yeah. you know like, i didn't think you really had a hangover i, I was like you know you're you're all right like let's just get some food in you yep again that seems to be my flaw is i think that <laughs> food and drink will instantly help a hangover yes um but i was like let's walk down to the coffee shop yep down the road mm -hmm. and get some some tea into you so we walked to the coffee shop. I will say I did feel better. That was, I remember the feeling of going outside and like the air being so cool. And I was like, this is actual heaven. Like mm -hmm. this weather is heaven. I felt a little bit better. So we walked to the coffee shop. We have to go inside to order, but then there's, there's a couple of tables inside, but there's people at them. So we go and sit outside. We, there's like only three tables outside and they're right in front of the big window that goes into the coffee shop where everybody else is sitting. So we get the tea, Shane gets coffee and we sit down. And I'm like, wow, I, I do feel a little bit better. Like, this is nice. It's beautiful outside. Mm -hmm. I take a sip of tea and I say to Shane, I'm going to throw up now. And I said, no, you're not. Yep. I said, just take a minute, take some deep breaths, have some more tea. And I said, no more words. All of a sudden, my cheeks ballooned. I slapped my hand over my, <laughs> over my mouth. She's actively throwing up. And she was like, oh, you actually, like, you're already throwing up. So we panicked. Yeah. Because, we're, again, we're outside, right in front of this big window. Aww. There's nowhere to go. So, so I, we look like there's no garbage cans, nothing. I don't want to run inside to, like, look for a bathroom, yeah, you know. You that's worse. You had started earlier. <laughs> yeah. But it was ready to now come out. And I was like, well, I'm outside. So <laughs> I, I duck next to our table because, like, we're on a patio. There's the window. And then next to us, there's some plantings <laughs> in a raised garden bed. And I begin to throw up. Empty herself. Into the garden bed. Mm -hmm. Like, right onto a plant. Right in front of the window. It was... It was for a long time. And I remember, like, I have an, such a vivid like, memory in my mind of looking up, like, my eyes going up while I was throwing up and making eye contact with these two men that were standing no. in the parking lot, like, just right in front of me and my, like, on the other <laughs> side of the garden bed. They were, like, 20 feet away and they were looking so concerned. And I just kept, you know, just doing what I was doing. Yep. Again, <laughs> if you're listening, yeah. If you were in this situation, mm -hmm. what would you do? Gather up your drinks? That you've already paid for that are in to-go cups. You could very easily walk away from this situation. Head back to the hotel room. But then that's that's admitting defeat. That's telling everybody who no, just watched that happen. Don't apply reason to <laughs> it. But there is no logic behind what we did. We, Hannah, sat back down I sat back at down. the table mm -hmm. right next to her. Yep. In, in size. Mm -hmm. And we finished our tea. I felt a lot better. And our coffee. I wanted tea. We had a nice long chat <laughs> outside at our table, enjoyed our breakfast, and everyone inside. I genuinely think we thought that, like, if we stayed, people would think that what they saw must have not been <laughs> what they thought it was. <laughs> Like, there's no way that she just did that and then stayed. So maybe they would think maybe she wasn't throwing up. Maybe it was something else. I have no idea what we were thinking. <laughs> but those are the two experiences yep. of our time throwing up in public. Mm -hmm. I don't think there have been any others. No. But if these are any indication oh God. there probably will be more in the future yeah you better cross your fingers that this doesn't happen to us again when we're anywhere near you because we do not handle it well <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back with one more fabulous oh. Air mayhem story <laughs> about the worst hotel experience we've ever had yep all right, we're back, and it is time for us to tell you the story of our stay. After those last two stories, <laughs> no one's still watching. But... I know, we're just talking to nobody. <laughs> but we're going to tell you the story of our stay at the Yotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's hotel with a Y. With a Y. The Yotel. That's fancy. In the 
Paris, what's the name of the airport? Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle airport, airport in Paris, France. So we were in Paris and we had a very early morning flight home. Our hotel that we were staying at in Paris was a bit of a drive from the airport. Yeah, probably 35 minutes. Yeah, and we figured we should go close to the airport, like as close as possible the night before, stay there so that when we leave really early early in the morning, we're, you know, a bit closer. And so in looking for what hotel we could get for that night, mm-hmm. we stumbled upon a incredible discovery. <laughs> the Charles de Gaulle Airport had a feature called a Yotel. Mm-hmm. And it was billed as this like luxury internal yeah. airport for Her- hotel. People hotel. Uh, air- <laughs> yeah, hotel. In the airport, yeah. For people aiming to do exactly what we needed to do. Yeah, it was like, hey, we actually have our own hotel. <laughs> Come stay here. And the reviews were glowing. Yeah. I think the luxury thing is we were confused. (laughs) We thought that all of the glowing reviews saying this was the most incredible experience ever meant that it was going to be a really nice hotel. (laughs) I don't know what those people were reviewing, like maybe just the convenience of being near the airport. (laughs) We went wrong somewhere in here. We went into it expecting the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> I think that colors the experience that we had. Yeah, it really does. Because if we had expected to just be sleeping on the floor at the airport, this would have seemed like a step up. <laughs> but barely. <laughs> so we arrived to the airport, and our, our big like victory that we thought we had was that this hotel was supposed to be inside security yeah so you get all the annoying like security chats done with yes ahead of time yep. you go in and you just have a relaxing luxurious night in the hotel wake up well rested well fed and you know saunter to yeah. your gate without having to worry about all the mayhem of like security in the morning and i swear it said that somewhere like we did not make that up <laughs> We were misled actively. We were misled because we arrive at the airport and I can't remember now if we went through security and then looked for the Yotel or if we just like started looking for the Yotel. Shane's laughing. Wait, wait. <laughs> what? I remember, do you remember when we first got there, the first like five employees that we asked about like where to go uh-huh. did not know they had <laughs> this Yotel. Yes. They were all like, what are you talking about? It was so hard to find. And there were just, <laughs> we like the Yotel is not at the airport, guys. It is in a separate terminal. So we went to the airport and they were like, we do not, what is the Yotel? Like they thought that we were confused. They were like, do you mean hotel? There's hotels. You silly Americans. Kind of nearby. Yeah. And we're like, no, the (laughs) the Yotel. (laughs) And they're like, what are you talking about? So we had to take like a bus, a tram. We had to travel to this Yotel far enough that I remember being like, our taxi ride from the hotel was easier than this. Now we're dragging our luggage for like 35 minutes to this Yotel. Mm -hmm. And then when we got there, there was no food at this terminal. It is only the Yotel. And we were we're, like, but we thought we'd be eating dinner at the airport. Yeah, but okay. So we're kind of like in this weird area. We've gone in and out of security now yeah. like uh, 10 times <laughs> somehow. I don't understand. We don't have our bags. They've yeah, been taken. True. They're like, we'll get them on the plane somehow, but you're not going to have them tonight. But now we're back out of security. And we're going down this like hall of like what we think is the hotel, but there has not yet been one sign <laughs> yeah. indicating that we are in the right place. And nothing it, that says hotel, nothing that says hotel. It looks like a conference center. It was a very, very wide carpeted hallway. A big empty space. It was, and then like a giant. We like walked into this big carpeted, gigantic room that looked like a ballroom, and there was a little stand that was selling like some prepackaged food. And I remember we we kept going. That's giving it a lot of credit. It was like. It's like a refrigerator. I mean, it was a refrigerator. Yeah, like a uh, refrigerated vending machine. Like two doors of a refrigerator yeah. and some chips. But there was a man there. That man we'll get to him in a minute. But so we go in. We go by that, and I'm like, well, no, this isn't. This can't be the hotel. 
I was like, where are the ref shots? But Shane, do you remember walking into the lobby of the Yotel, which was just like past the food area, through these double doors, and there were people lying on the floor everywhere? Uh Because you could either pay for a room at the Yotel, or you could pay for like their free coffee, and they had hot chocolate, I remember that, and like a space to lie on a couch in this lobby in the sort of reception yeah area there's sort of a desk yeah. where like ostensibly an employee should be like yeah. checking people into their rooms yeah there's some there's a customer standing <laughs> at that desk yelling at the computer yeah. and we realize it's kind of like a automated like sign yourself in yeah thing maybe but this customer is very upset <laughs> So we're just standing around like, I just can't be it. This is not it. No one looked happy. <laughs> it it looked like it was very strange to walk into that room and there were, because the rest of it had been empty. And then we walked through these double doors and there were just like 50 people lying on the floor. <laughs> it looked like the combination of an airport lounge that had mm. been stripped of <laughs> all amenities <laughs> and prison. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Shane, the owner of the hotel is not happy with this video <laughs> they're like this is a luxury stay <laughs> at the airport easy, honestly. <laughs> okay so we go into a room well we find the employee yeah who's like yes this is the hotel <laughs> like why the hell did you book yourself here like <laughs> you're about to have a bad time but we went to the room with my mom she was with us and so it was like a triple occupancy room we go in there are two bunk beds on the left wall. Everything in the room is white. It looks like a spaceship room. And the the hint of sweat, the smell of sweat. It didn't smell good. Is ever present. Yeah. It's all carpeted. Maybe it was mold. I think it was the smell of mold. Just something dead. Yeah. A little bit it was musty. Mold. So there's this these two spaceship pods on the left wall. And then there's like a bed pod in the middle that is maybe a double bed. That's where we were going to sleep, but it's like folded into a sitting position. Mm -hmm. And I remember you had to like push buttons to get it to lay flat. And the bed, unfortunately, they'd forgotten to put a mattress (laughs) and instead they just put bricks (laughs) on top of it. It was was extremely firm. Uh, And then the bathroom was on the right wall and there was no wall. No privacy. Nope. It was a glass it was glass, like there was a window. So that's, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly. It was a glass wall. It was a glass wall right. and then a toilet and a shower inside the glass wall. No, like curtain. No. No, anybody to like, make it private. Yeah. No sound reduction. No, so like whenever any of us had to go to the bathroom, we would just be like, don't look now. Just make some noise. Yeah. <laughs> ready now. <laughs> uh, okay, so like all that, we... We very quickly understood this was not meant to be a luxury experience. This was meant to be a down and dirty, like somewhere to sleep that's not the floor. The floor. Publicly. Even though some people were on the floor. Yeah. (laughs) Well, they didn't pay for the room. But honestly, like the entire hotel would have been fine. It was very, very much colored by the fact that we thought we would be at the airport and we knew at this point that we were going to have to travel like 40 minutes in the morning to get to the correct part of the airport. And go through security. Yeah. Like not like the plane was ruined. We were like, now we have to get up the same amount of time. Like, you know, it was just so annoying. It was the difference between the branding of it online yeah. and what the actual product was. Yes. Yeah, so we were annoyed. Okay. And so, we're also very hungry at this point. But like from the branding, the website, it really made it feel like the food options were plentiful yeah. and luxurious. So we were like, okay, let's just find that employee and ask them where all the restaurants Where the are. dining is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we go find the employee. They inform us. I think they laughed at us when uh-huh. we said, where are the restaurants? <laughs> oh. uh, they told us that there are no restaurants here. There is just the man and the refrigerator. The man and the refrigerator. <laughs> that man standing by the fridge over there will sell you something from his refrigerator, and that is it. Okay, so, so what like, did we eat for dinner that we night? We were like, that's disappointing. Um, do you remember what you ate? 
I, I ate, ate a quinoa salad oh. that was almost frozen. Yeah. I had to like, chew like <laughs> hard, crunchy, yeah. frozen quinoa. Ice quinoa. That was my dinner. That which, was your dinner. To be fair, it filled me up and it was fine. It was fine. You had a worse experience. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what my main... Do you remember what I ate aside from the yogurt? I, all I remember is your parfait. Yeah. I, I think it was it was all kind of things like that. Like a little, you know, quinoa salad, a little yogurt. I don't remember if they had sandwiches. I, don't, I think they might have been all out of sandwiches because I think I would have eaten one. They did have beer. I'll give them that. Wow. I did get a Heineken, which... <laughs> You're happy Save about that. Save the night for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a fruit par a uh, fruit parfait. It was just like vanilla yogurt and some fruit on top. Yep. It was very small. But don't don't don't. No, I'm just saying. I like on the size. No, but of normally it. a fruit like people are probably picturing like a drink bottle, like oh. a, you know a cup. This oh. was like a one inch high rec- like square plastic container. Everything about the hotel was less than we expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lot of yogurt. Uh, I open up the container and see that the fruit is all covered in mold. Like like plentiful mold. Yeah, there's mold. Like all the raspberries, if you like turn them over, there's mold underneath. Like uh-huh. there, there's mold on the fruit. It had been sitting in that fridge for weeks. Yeah. So I, with my mom, brought it back out to the man to get... This is, oh, part of this is that these are all extraordinarily expensive. Oh. The quinoa salad was like $20. Like it it was <laughs> unbelievably the expensive. It was like 15 Yeah. So we wanted our money back or to like pick an alter, like maybe a fruit parfait that didn't have mold. Yeah, pick something without mold. Yeah, we were hoping to get some sort of exchange uh, for something that I could eat because we had just spent like $100 at this stand. And uh, the man, who was not very friendly and not very nice. That's because he lives in the (laughs) hotel. He looked at the, the yogurt parfait and he said to me, all fruit has mold. The end. Period. Period. Like, you will not be getting a refund yep. or a new item because all fruit has mold. All fruit has mold. Fruit is nature. Mold is nature. You picked the fruit, you get the mold. You need to put your <laughs> pride and your dignity yeah. aside and eat the moldy fruit. Yeah, stop being so picky and spoiled. <laughs> Think of the people out there, outside of the hotel. <laughs> Who, who don't even have the option don't even have to shop to this. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're at the airport with all the restaurants. <laughs> but not I us. <laughs> would have killed to stay out in the regular airport terminal, <laughs> sleep in my chair, and eat at a Chili's. It would have been so dinner. much better. So much better. <laughs> so we did not get a refund. He did not believe that anything was wrong with moldy fruit. Uh, I think you just bought another item for yourself. Yeah. I, I don't really remember. Yeah, we just had to buy something else, so we were even more annoyed. All fruit has mold. We didn't sleep very well. We had to, you know, lug everything back to the airport in the morning. It was a terrible, terrible experience. So, if you are traveling through an airport that has a hotel, <laughs> we urge you caution. Yeah. It's a good place if you're just trying to catch some sleep. And, yes. If you, you know, know what to expect. If we had known yeah. that this is not in the airport that we need to be in and this is, is somewhere else. There are zero food options. And we could have brought food. Like, we just didn't know any of this. And so that's why it, it was the worst night ever. It was a rough night. And then we had to get up at 4 a.m. still yep. to catch our flight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Oh, man. That is the end of this episode. Yep. If you enjoy Jet Air Mayhem, We encourage you to leave a review. Yes. Leave a five star review. Yep. Share us. What else? Comment if you're on YouTube, whatever. Uh, We will be back next week with a brand new episode. Yep. But until then, here we go. It is a junkyard out there. Uh huh. And it is filled with mold. Wow. But you. All junk has mold. Up on your high horse. (laughs) <laughs> Did you realize that all the yards have mold? Oh, nice. You stole my thunder. <laughs> huh? Oh, I didn't know that's where you're going. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's why we get along. Yep. All right, everyone. <laughs> have a good week. We'll see you soon. <laughs>